Time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. And here's your host, John Chapman. What is going on, Faithful? Um, it is a rare Saturday morning show, but with Easter tomorrow, um, got a bunch of family stuff, which I'm excited about. I uh, wanted to jump on just because I think there's a lot of stuff that I haven't talked about that I wanted to get to, and it's just, man, with, with we're, we're inside a month now of the draft, and the 49ers are still making some sneaky moves. Uh, you know, the title of the show is 40 hours getting crafty, but are they showing their hand? Because there's a lot of stuff that you can kind of take away from what the 49ers are currently doing. And I want to break those down, the players involved, go over some more draft stuff. I finished up my first round grades completely. I've got 24, which is a little higher than I thought initially. Um, but I want to go through my top 24 big board just kind of quick. Um but let, let, let's jump into this. Let, let, let's let's do this because uh, shout out to all the hashtag CCs. What's up, Sean? I see you first. Ice Cold Nars. We got Josh, Dr. Steve. You guys are the best. What's up, Nick? Appreciate you guys. And, and right here, Josh. And let's get our tight end too. So probably the biggest news that took place yesterday, the 49ers are the only team that have done this this offseason. They offered a contract to a player that was tendered. This is the restricted free agent tier, not the unrestricted free agent, right? Um, so the Detroit Lions offered a one-year, $2.98 million contract to tight end Brock Wright. He's been awesome. Undrafted free agent, and he has just been absolutely stellar. Uh, out of Notre Dame in 2021. And he's played 41 games, but you look at his snaps, he's played 456 special team snaps. Is Brock Wright, 1,315 offensive snaps. Dude's been incredible. Seven receiving touchdowns, even though he's more of a blocking guy. Receiving options there. He, he provides a lot there. So the 49ers move in, and they offer him a three-year, $12 million contract, $6 million guaranteed. And he agreed to it. So here's the way... The restricted free agent process works. The Detroit Lions have five days. Now it's down to three days, um, depending on when you're listening to this. The, the contract went through on Friday, so that's what it was agreed to. So basically by, what is that, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, that's whatever the deal will have to be. Um, the Lions can choose to match it. Or they can choose to let them go. Now, here's why I say that it's crafty. One, the 49ers are the only team that have done this, offered a restricted free agent from an opposing team. Nobody's done this in the NFL this year. Hasn't happened. Now, the Lions may be messed up because here's one of the issues and why I don't like uh, restricted free agent players too much unless you put draft pick compensation on it. Like, for example, if we're talking about Juwan Jennings, they put a second-round tender on him which means if somebody did this exact same thing to Jawan Jennings and the 49ers didn't match, that team would have to give us a second-round pick. Well, the Lions chose to just put right of first refusal tender. There's no draft pick compensation attached to this. So if the Niners do take him away, you don't owe the Lions anything. No draft pick compensation whatsoever. And on top of that... Because they went right of first refusal, this doesn't even go into the compensation pick formula, which the Niners are the best at in the NFL. So, for example, you lost Charlie Warner, right? He's getting $4 million a year somewhere else with the Falcons, I believe. And we're going to sign somebody for that exact same amount if the Lions don't agree to match it. We would get the compensation pick formula for losing Charlie Warner at a $4 million per year contract average. And this deal, which is also a four-year contract you know, per average, wouldn't even factor into the compensation pick formula. That's what is like, all right, some people play chess, some people play checkers. And we know what Dan Campbell plays. Now, Dan Campbell, a former tight end, obviously loves Brock Wright. Do I think that they will match this deal? I do. 
I think that they will do this. And so here's here's where I go back from the Niners' perspective. And while I this is why I'm not doing a full uh, you know Brock Wright breakdown just yet because I do think that the Lions will keep him. Right, raw, raw, caveman, PC principal Dan Campbell. He's not going to let somebody come in and take his own player. That's who we are. We're tough. Like that's just his mindset. I hope the 49ers get him. But the biggest takeaway to me is the need for the 49ers to get a tight end too. They showed their hand in not one but two separate positions that haven't been solidified yet. Tight end two. They have a very real need there. That's this Brock Wright thing, whether, you know, and again, if the 49ers do get them, the lines don't match it, then that problem solved. You, you got Kittle, you've got Brock Wright, and then you've got Braden Willis and Cameron Latu, if you want to put them in there, fighting for that tight end three roster spot. Braden Willis is going to win that role. Um, but if not, now tight end two is a legit concern moving into the draft. The 49ers have showed us they do not feel comfortable with Brandon, Braden Willis and Cameron Latu being the competition for tight end two. They do not. So they've kind of showed their hand there, which opens up the draft pick. All right, who's tight end two worthy? Where are those ranges? Do you spend a first round pick on a tight end two? No, uh, unless you're the Atlanta Falcons and you spend a top five pick on one. But a little burn there. Uh, that's a little Kyle Pitts burn. Anyway, fantasy has trickled over into the 49ers Rush podcast. Uh, that's what it is. But there are guys available. Now, the second position, and I want to go through some of those tight end matches that I think do make sense here in a minute. But the second position is the safety spot. You brought in Julian Blackman. Contract stuff started, but they kind of told him, you're coming in here to compete. You're not getting a guaranteed starting job. And so Julian Blackman walked. He's not signed. Safety market has gone stale. And so now these like safeties are sitting there like, well, whatever team doesn't draft the safety, that's where I'm going to land up. And we've seen this. The safety market is the second worst market in the NFL next to only the running backs. And the running backs kind of picked up a little bit. The safeties get no love. They get no love. Um, so th those are kind of the two biggest glaring positions that the 49ers have showed their hand. Look, we're willing to pay for that number three safety. We're willing to pay for that number two tight end. No finalized deals yet. We'll see what happens with Brock Wright. And we'll know by Wednesday. But if this Brock Wright deal doesn't go through, I'm telling you right now, 49ers are going to take a tight end day two. They're going to. That's, that's just what it's going to be. So, um, you know, the chat's blowing up. Appreciate you guys. Sorry I went off the rails a little bit there. Yatsik, my man. Uh, glad to see you, brother. Glad to see you. Glad you're here. Hopefully, church with the family was great on Thursday. We had a cool hangout um, over on the 49ersrush.com. It was an absolute blast. Always a good time. Appreciate all the people over there. Josh says Lions are not matching. Oof. I don't know about that, man. Uh, he says they got to pay Goff. They got to pay Amon. Yeah, we got to pay people, too. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, you can make the, a, a three-year, $12 million deal. I'm not sure any team in the NFL couldn't get away with that. Like, you can find the numbers. You can squeeze some stuff. You can extend one player, all that stuff. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Sean says if they can match, can Niners bump it up again? No, that's not the way it works. So you come forward with your best good faith offer. It's not like real estate and going back and forth or whatever else. That's not the way it works. And so the Niners had to agree with the player. So the Niners already agreed with Brock Wright. Three year, 12 million, six million guaranteed. That's done. So the Niners ain't paying like that contract has to be submitted and all the details to Detroit and the league office. And the Lions have to meet that deal or go past it. They just have to meet it. They don't have to go past it. Um, they literally, the language verbatim, all those things, they could just sign however the Niners wrote it up. And the Niners can get creative and front loaded or back loaded to see what Detroit couldn't match and all that stuff. But, and a reason why a lot of people don't do this is because the compensation pick formula is affected. It is not affected. Sorry. So, whenever you write a first refusal a player, you're hoping to sneak them in. 
And that's what Detroit was hoping. That's what they were hoping. Um, but it didn't work. Did not work. Um, Josh, my man, he says, Theo Johnson, if all else fails. You know, I put down, if Brock Wright doesn't work, who are the draft options? Okay. Now, my order would go Jatavian Sanders, second round. Third round, Theo Johnson. Fourth round, Ben Sennett out of Kansas State. Those are my three guys. There's more, but those are my fits that are like, all right, I totally get that one. And, you know, we talked a little bit about Theo Johnson. He was on our WWJD mock draft um, that we did, but I love this dude. I have a third round grade on him. Um, 49ers met with them. Theo Johnson out of Penn State, 6'6", 259. He's big. He's big dude. Um, does everything. He's older. Senior bowl, check mark. Met with the Niner, met with the 49ers, check mark. Loves the block. Big athlete. I mean, dude can run. That's a fourth round. He would be much more the tight end, too. He would be your blocker with way more receiving upside than Charlie Warner. And that's another thing. Brock Wright. Way more receiving upside than Charlie Warner. Uh, probably not as good a blocker, but he's a good blocker. Theo Johnson, uh, not as good a blocker as Charlie Warner. Way more receiving upside. Okay? And so, yeah, I like Theo Johnson. Now, my question to you guys is let's talk some Jatavian Sanders. Oh, man, I forget. I got to put the, what's it called, the apostrophe in there. Jatavian Sanders is a freak. How comfortable with the 49ers, and I'm asking you guys, would you be pissed off if the Niners spent a second-round pick on Jatavian Sanders at tight end, at tight end two? That's that's spicy. Theo Johnson, third round. I think a lot of teams are going to have him third or fourth round, and this is a terrible tight end class. And I think that's another reason why the 49ers went and got a little aggressive here with Brock Wright. Not a good tight end class. It's not. Brock Bowers. Whatever, he'll be off the board um, way before the Niners. And no, I would not trade up a first-round plus for a tight end. I would probably never take a tight end ever in the first round. I don't care how good they are. Back into the first round, maybe. But, like, I'm sorry. I, I'm a weirdo. I'm not spending on a first round. Like, I'm just not going to do it. Uh, and I know other people would, would disagree with me on that, and that's okay. Brock Bauer's not an option for me. But Jatavian Sanders is. Not a good blocker. This is an athletic Travis Kelsey type guy. Not saying he's Travis Kelsey. I'm telling you, he's a Travis Kelsey type guy. He's not the best measurables. He's what he's 6'3, 245. He's not huge like Kelsey, but he is a space making playmaker that catches everything. Playmaker. We like this dude can play. He is an absolute baller. Contested catches, seventh most in the NCAA, regardless of position. 21 years old, huge hands, ran a 4.69. Not the fastest guy, not a blazer. Just get him the damn ball and watch. Just watch. Incredible player. Um, you know, he's much more your move guy. He's not going to block. You're going to bring Braden Willis into block. You're going to spread him out. You're going to let him work. Because he is freaking route tree nine, hands eight, athleticism nine, contested catch eight, versatility nine, blocking five. <laughs> Dalton Kincaid, Travis Kelsey. That's what he is. Now, I don't think he'd be there when the Niners pick in the second round at their back end spot. Maybe he falls. And if that's the case, you run that damn card in. But, oh, man, he's so freaking fun. Like, I mean, he's that damn good, guys. He is that good. And, yeah, I, I don't like spending a second-round pick on a tight end, too. I really don't. I don't. And Josh says, don't think 40 yards go tight end in the second round. But the 40 yards met with him. This dude ain't going to be there in the third round. So, like, why even waste a meeting with him? Um, like, the Niners have a clear need at tight end, too. Jadavian Sanders is my number two tight end in this draft by a wide margin. I have nobody else in the same tier as him. I, I Like, um, right here, Lori says, you know, I'd pass on tight end in the second round. What's up, Lori? Glad to see you, brother. Um, let's see here. Sanders is more of a move tight end, right? Um, how about he's the big slot that replaced Jennings? Jennings ain't going nowhere. But, um, yeah, maybe I didn't understand there. Yeah, I don't know. Ah, 
that, that, that's a rough one. But if you do wait till the fourth, if you want to wait, yeah, Theo Johnson's the guy. But if he's not there, you know, another player that I haven't talked a lot about is Ben Sinnott out of, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, sorry, Kansas State. And with K-State, guys, you know what you're getting. You're getting tough. You're getting mean. You're getting, and he's the toughest, meanest K-State K-State there is. Dude walked on, earned his scholarship. He wears number 34 because that was the only number that they had available for him whenever he walked on. And you know what he said? He says, I'm keeping it. Got his scholarship, became a captain, became a starter. No, nope, I'm keeping it. 34. 34 out there at tight end. That's freaking respect, man. 6'3", 250. So he, he's thick. He's a thicker dude. Ran a 4'6", 8'40". Yeah, not a speed guy. 6'8", 3 cone. Shifty, shifty. I mean, that is better than Debo. Um, that's a better, that's incredible. Six, eight, three cone. Um, 22 years old, tough in line, can do it all. Tested incredibly well. Natural pass catcher, no issues with blocking. Um, they run wham, K State does, which is like he'll be. Think about George Kittle when we motion him across and then he comes back and blocks across. Uh, the defensive end on the back side to kick out. They do that, except they ask Ben Sennett to block the defensive tackle. They leave the defensive tackle unblocked, and so he has to kick inside and block a DT one-on-one consistently. And so, dude's tough. So, like, he fits the Niners scheme to a 10. Uh, he's, he's awesome. Now, the issues are with him, you know, third to fourth round grade, He's, he's not as fast. He's not as big. He's not as clean. All those different things. But, man, he sure is. He may have already peaked. You know what I mean? Like, the elite athletics. Like, this guy couldn't even get a scholarship out of high school. Like, maybe he's already at his maxed out his potential. That's the issue. That's why I think fourth round, third to fourth round, around there is where he would go. But I love him. I I, I do. I I like I think he's awesome. So that's, you know, three options at the tight end position that if, and that's an is, Brock Wright doesn't work out. Hopefully, Detroit says, man, shoulder shrug, y'all can have him. I just can't see Caveman doing that. I really, really can't. Um, I don't think it's in his DNA. Um, that's just me. So uh, let, let's see. Let's get through some more of this chat, uh, chat which, you know, before we get, jump over to the safety position, because there's a lot of stuff right here that I want to get to. I love this. Uh, Ice Cold Narsh says, you know, John, how are you going to cover the draft? That's a great question. I, I'm in I'm in limbo, man. I, I'm in the process of reaching out to places here in San Francisco and hosting a live draft event that would simulcast, and we do live online while also being with 49ers fans in person. But, man, I'm so freaking exhausted from all the events that we did. And I just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm struggling going off the edge there. So I'm not sure there will be something online, no matter what uh, that's going to be the case. Who's going to be with us. I, I just got to figure it out. Uh, so I will, we'll, we'll see about that. I want to do a live draft event. Why not in San Francisco? Why not? But also pair that with online as well. I, I want, I want to do with both uh, really, really do. Oh, look at this Spencer. Hashtag CC tuning in from Dubai. How cool is that, Spencer? Uh, thanks, JC, for all you do. Really appreciate you, man. Um, more tight end talk. Josh says, third round is where I want to see a tight end number two. If that's the case, it's for me, Theo Johnson and Ben Sinnott. Uh, deep dive, Kate Stover. Didn't like him near as much, personally. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what that looks like. Um, lots of... <laughs> lots of wide receiver stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll do a live stream permanent. Uh, we'll, we'll have a live stream for sure, even if we're live. What I ideally want, I've got a fun list of about seven different places throughout the city that I think could work. Um, and so just working out the numbers and the payments and all that stuff is always such a, a chore. But the idea is we'd have 100 to 150 people guaranteed seating in a venue in San Francisco with me and a couple other podcasters going through. So that's Niner centric coverage, NFC West centric coverage of the entire day one and day two process. That's what I want to do, but it will be online in some variation. So if you don't live in the Bay area, yes, get ready to hang out with us for the draft period. Um, the, 
we've done it for what four years in a row now. Why would we stop? And yeah, we're not going to stop. We're we're going we're to do that. So um, now those are the tight ends. Let's jump over now and let's talk about safeties because I think that this is an issue. You bring in, you know, the Huff injuries there. And Jair Brown played great. He played really, really well. It wasn't as consistent, but it was a rookie. You know, I mean, that's what you get. Rookie safety play, Jair Brown. He was a third-round rookie. That dude lived up to the billing. He's going to be the guy moving forward. And, you know, people were saying, oh, we need to trade Huff, sign Julian Blackman. Get the hell out of here with that. Why would you trade an all-pro safety? I get the injury. I understand that. But, yeah, you need backup plan. But... You don't walk away from an all-pro safety. The one year he started, he was an all-pro safety. Why would you move away from that? Your foundation is Hufunga. The backup plan is somebody else. Now, and I apologize that the audio is low on this, but here's John Lynch. This is a quick one-minute clip. Shout-out to Juan Salas for hooking us up. Quick one-minute clip just about John Lynch talking about Hufunga in the safety position. Talano is doing really well. That's the great news. Um, you know, he's um, he's rehabbing extremely well, uh, beating the timeline. Everybody does. But uh, <laughs> Talano is a worker, and he's, he's doing a great job. Um, we're incredibly high on Jair and his prospects for becoming a player, um, you know, at, at that position that we can really trust and, and a playmaker as well. So uh, those guys, we feel good about it. Now, do you continue to add? We have George Odom. Um, you know, Gip is a guy that we've always kept in touch with and will continue to. And do we want to add? We'll see. You know, we're, we kind of feel like we're wrapping up free agency, but there may be one or two more moves. We'll see. Um, but, uh, you know, we brought some guys in that we like their game. We're still out there. The safety market kind of took a beating. I feel bad for those guys. It took years to, to get the guys to where they were being compensated. Uh, and uh, they a bunch of them, uh, you know, got cut. And I think that's that's why some really good players were out there. And, you know, you'd be foolish not to take a look. And, and so that's kind of where the safety spot is. Like, you need somebody else. Like, George Odom, I'm sorry. I do not consider a safety at all. Special teams only, emergency safety, right? Like, he's a safety in the same way Kyle Juszczyk is a quarterback. And that's not to throw shade on Odom. He's a damn good special teamer, and we're going to need him more now than ever with the new kickoff rules. But, like, no, you have two safeties. you got to have a number three guy. Blackman would be awesome, but they told him, you got to come compete, not guaranteed, and so he left. Now, look, right here, uh, odd, but we bring back Gip on a one-year deal. That's a possibility. Tayshawn Gibson's been awesome. You know, you signed him off the street, and he's unsigned. The problem is, will Gip come back as a non-starter? Because I'm telling you right now, when Hufunga's healthy, Hufunga and Jair Brown are your two safeties. And Gip saw firsthand, he was one of the people, quote-unquote, responsible for what this coaching staff did to Jimmy Ward. Does Gip want to be that guy? And Gip's not going to be a nickel. He's not going to be a nickel. Like, Jimmy moved to nickel. Jimmy has way more athleticism. Gip in this age is not moving to nickel. I don't, maybe he is. I don't know. They put freaking Logan Ryan there in the Super Bowl. Like, good gosh. Um, so, yeah, Gip's a possibility. You know, if, if, and that's the one thing that's kind of cool about the safety market. I say that because it's bad for the safety market. You go through the draft and you don't land one of these safeties that you like, you can go sign some free agents. There, there's free agent studs available. Let me look if I can find Mike Clay's list. He does probably the best at Mike Clay NFL um, with all of the free agents that are available. He updates that sheet. That's just freaking awesome. Here we go. I found it. Um, here are the safeties that are available. Like there's These are guys that are still available. Julian Blackman, Justin Simmons, Tayshawn Gibson, Kayvon Wallace, Quandre Diggs. Rudy Ford, Micah Hyde, Marcus May, Kareem Jackson, Eddie Jackson. Uh, like, come on. Keon O'Neill, Logan Ryan, John Johnson, Adrian Amos. There are no safety movement. All these guys are sitting on a shelf. So the Niners, with the way the roster is built, you want to draft and have the young development. 
but you don't have to. And so, yeah, you brought in Julian Blackman, who's safety number one out there on the free agency market, and he's a stud. Nobody's paying safeties. Nobody's paying safeties. I, I, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, Kip, hey, man, you want to come back? Um, you start until Hufunga's ready after the first month. You know, you just heard John Lynch say Hufunga is ready. You know, he's ahead of schedule. But what do I always say? I trust the Niners with a lot of things. I really, really do. I don't trust them whenever it comes to injuries. Whenever he got injured, I think it was in November. Eh, I want to make sure I'm right on that because that does affect the timeline. Uh, and, you know, another thing is, like, the ACL is not what it used to be. Doesn't mean every single player comes back the way that you want them to because they don't. Some people don't come back from that knee. His It happened 11-19. Against Tampa, we were at that game. I was there with the gold mine. Shout out to the UK faithful. They were incredible. Um, it happened 11 19, November 19th. That's whenever it happened. So I don't think, you know, September, that's 10 months. You know, Adrian Peterson and medical, whatever, they changed it all. And what happens with the recovery from the ACL? Now, I'm not saying you just bank on it. And that's not what the Niners are doing. The Niners are meeting with safeties. The Niners are bringing in free agent safeties. But they're also telling them, you're not starting. You got to earn it. You can come in and compete. How the hell are you going to beat out Hufunga in all pro safety? Unless he comes back and he's just not, you know, where he should be. Right here, Josh. He says, you know, Hufunga and Brown are studs. Thank you. Thank you. I think they're the guys moving forward. Now, I want to get into some draft guys um, that are safety possibilities. And the Niners have met with some of them. I am so excited to announce our new platform launch, The49ersRush.com. We've been active on Patreon for years, and we're still going to keep that community going. But The49ersRush.com has everything Patreon offers and a bunch more. You want to watch player breakdowns? Guess what? You click that. It's filtered based on players. You want to see Javon Hargrave, what he brings, some CMC tape broken down, IU, Jair Brown. We've got hundreds and hundreds of tapes. on. Now, you want football 101. You want to learn scheme. Guess what? We've got every single offensive, defensive, special team snap. Head over to the 49ersrush.com, sign up, join the community, and plus we got a seven-day free trial. So. And, you know, to update you guys, I just released an Isaac Yedon breakdown, uh, the new corner that we brought in free agency. That's up on the 49ersrush.com in our Patreon channel. And I got to say, first takeaway I had, Ambry Thomas ain't making this roster. There ain't no way. There's no way. Unless there's an injury, that outside corner spot, your your two corners are locked in Diamandor Lenore and Charvarius Ward. Now, the competition for the other outside corner, Daryl Luter Jr., Isaac Yadam, and Ambry Thomas. Not to mention who you draft. Niners got to draft some guys inside, but that's kind of where I see that. So now, back to, sorry, I didn't mean to get off task, even though that's what I always freaking do. Um, you know, if we move over and we start talking about some of these safeties, and right here, the 49ers says, you know, I don't want Gibson. He's good. But we started to see it. We started to see the bad play. Uh, you know, I think it was the Packers game. Might have been the Lions game where the first half was as bad as it could possibly be. Then it was the greatest second half ever. Consistent plays huge. Permanent. Do we go safety or free safety in the draft with Huff coming back? From injury, depth doesn't look so hot. Logan Ryan, yeah. And that's the thing. The 49ers like to exchange their safeties. We don't do a true free safety look. And especially with today's NFL, with all the jet motions and counter you know, sweeps and all that stuff, you've got to have a safety that can do both. So this idea of going after a free safety, the Niners aren't that defense. We're not that defense. We're really, really not. Um, oh, right here. I mean, permanent says Jamal Adams, a possibility or a pipe dream. That dude's dog trash. And, you know, I don't like to say that on here too often. He's horrible. He's a horrible person. He's a horrible player injuries. He's a horrible locker room guy. Don't want anything to do with that guy. 
Don't want them anywhere around us. Um, and I am somebody that tries to reserve <laughs> uh, saying things like that. And I know I'm going to get emails for why do I say those things, but he's terrible. He's terrible. So I'm just absolutely not. Um, no, you don't attack people's wives. And no, that dude's just absolute trash. Going out. No, just no, absolutely not. So let's talk about safeties that I do like. Because I think that there there are some studs out there. Um, you know, the two my two favorite safeties in this class. Um, I do not have a first round grade on any safety. Cameron Kitchens and Javon Bullard. Cameron Kitchens out of Miami was so fun. Now you look at his metrics and you're like, nah, just nah. You know, 5'11, 203. Now that checks exactly what the 49ers want at safety. Any defensive back for the 49ers. Six foot, 200 pounds, that's what they want. Cookie cutter, because they can move them around. 5'11", 203, that's perfect. Ran a 4.65, not fast. Very similar to Talanoho Funga. Very similar. Um, not a top-end speed guy. 35-inch vert, it's pretty nice. 21 years old, a lot of ball production. 11 interceptions in two years. Dude, just instincts, ball production, downhill player. His transition in and out of his breaks, uh, just unreal. Um, film shows he loves football. Athleticism is a concern, though. Very similar to Hufunga. Very similar. But the anticipation, the anger, the the all that he plays with, it shows on tape. I, I, I freaking love this dude. Uh, led his high school to three state championships in Florida. Just showed up and played. He can ball. The best tape. Maybe the most fun tape of any defensive back in this entire class. And that's quarters included. He's not a first round player. He's not, but man, Cameron kitchens. He's fun as heck, man. Darnell Savage is my athletic comp play style. Von bell all over the place. I got a second round grade on him. Uh, 49ers fit nine out of 10. Like he's fun. He's a lot of fun. Then you got Javon Bullard out of Georgia. Niners haven't met with him yet. 5'10, 198. Close to the same type, 21 years old. He's fast, 447. Javon Bullard, that dude, he could play nickel. And he did play nickel a year ago. And whenever he did, he was all over the place. He had three and a half sacks, seven tackles for loss, and then they moved him to free safety. And so the versatility is there with this kid. And he was awesome at nickel. He was awesome at safety. Nickel is such a high priority in the NFL. I would fail him at nickel and move him to safety first. Um, like th start at nickel, see if it works, then move him back. But Javon Bullard is freaking his middle name is I, I'm gonna mess it up. Masculus. That's his middle name, Javon Masculus Bullard. Like, come on, man. This dude is just tough. Several plays, you'll see him run through wide receivers that are trying to like block him and just knock him down. Like he's a bowling ball. He's a mean, mean player. So the aggressiveness, the change of direction, the size, the athleticism, he has all of those things. Um, and he can play nickel and there. Um, so that that's that's there. Uh, right here, say Dijon is the best safety in the draft. Uh, Dijon is a corner, man. He might be this. Dijon could play. You're talking about Cooper Dijon out of Iowa. I have first round grade on him. He can play outside corner. He's got the athleticism and speed to do it. Easy. He's got the aggressiveness and change of direction to be nickel. And yeah, he could play safety. But if you draft Cooper DeJean and you put him at safety, man, that's like that's like getting a Ferrari and parking it on the curb. You know what I mean? Like, no, nah, you got to put that in the, the premium spot. So I, I don't disagree with you. Cooper DeJean is the best safety in this class. But you got to put it a Royce Royce where it goes, baby. And, and that's in the showroom, which is the outside corner spot. Now, if that doesn't work, then you move them to the nickel. And if that doesn't work, then you move them to the safety. Remember all those names of safety players that are just out on the street right now. No, no, no. You spent a first round pick on Cooper DeJean. It's not to play safety. It's not to play safety. It's really, really like, oh, I love that kid. I don't know what to do with him. And I'll be honest with you. Where do I have Cooper Dijon right now? Uh, like, and he's dropping. Yeah, I know he's a white corner, and I know we, we don't get a lot of those. He's my number 16th overall player, Cooper Dijon. The injury, I understand that. Don't care. <laughs> like, 
th- this guy is freaking. Here we go. I'm, I'm about to go off. This is Cooper DeJean out of Iowa, six foot two oh three. Textbook perfect build for a defensive back. They broke his fibula, so you, the testing's not there, and so you're like, oh, well, how athletic is he? And, and he broke his fibula in November of 2023, so similar timeline to um, Talano Hufunga, but no, 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 this is bone. This isn't ACL. This isn't ligament. That's not this bone. Fibula, that ain't that big of a deal, man. I know it's more gruesome whenever it looks like whatever, and I don't know. Every team will have to do their medical checks and you know check if it's muscular and nerves and all that stuff. But we ain't got that, so I, I we're not going to get that. I'm telling you right now, listen to this dude right here, all right? If, if athleticism or speed is a concern, played quarterback and defensive back in high school, had 54 touchdown passes or combined touchdowns, four-sport four athlete, basketball, baseball, track, football. Third all-time, this is crazy to me, third all-time in points scored in the state of Iowa playing basketball, just ahead of Harrison Barnes. Athleticism's there. 218 steals in Iowa. Fastest 100-meter dash in Iowa the entire state. Ran a 10-7. You're not worried about speed with a 10-7-40. 200-meter, it was under 22 seconds. Ran a 21-9. Long jump, 24-2. State championship in the 4 by one State championship in the 100. State championship, or he was runner-up in the 200. He got second. So you're not worried about speed. So I don't understand why people keep saying he's a safety. Film doesn't say he's a safety at all. That dude could play anything he wants to play. Like, I'm sorry, man. Cooper DeJean is a freaking beast. He has a 96.8 coverage grade from outside corner. Why would you move that to safety? Now that's your backup backup plan. Oh, y'all got me on a thing, man. My play style comp is Eric Weddle with more size and more speed. 49ers fit, 10. (laughs) I freaking love him, man. Yeah, right here, Josh. He is a mythical creature. He makes no sense. And you watch him and you're just like, yep, 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 yep. The whole time. Like, you just can't help but smile. He's so clean. Just clean. Clean, clean, clean. John Q says the Texas tech safety looks pretty good. That's a dude that says he doesn't believe space exists. (laughs) He's an athlete. Um, But yeah, he's a weird cat, man. Uh, Not say that that means, you know, whatever. Um, That's, that's not what I'm saying now. Um, And again, you know, uh, this question right here, you know, who are the top 10 safeties in this draft? I have five completed grades. So I go through, and again, I talked about this on the last show. I go through and I do a whole bunch of research, and a lot of people have helped me with this, so it's not just me. Um, 49ers rush team don't play. And so here, I want to make sure I give credit where credit's due. That's being a turd. Let me go down. There we go. Um, Shout out to Josh, Zach, Oscar, Vince. You guys are the freaking best of the best uh, for helping me, you know, kind of build this out. But I go through, we build up all this information. I go through, watch just a little bit, probably about a quarter, do a little bit of highlights, try to get them in the right neighborhood. Then I go back and I watch two game films on them. Once I finish that and my notes, then I put them on my big board. So I only have my top five safeties are done. Cameron Kitchens, one. Javon Bullard, two. Kalen Bullock, who the Niners met with. And shout out to Kalen Bullock. He's John Muir, uh, Pasadena, where my son played football before we moved up to the Bay Area. Damn good coverage player. He's just allergic to the run. And I'm pretty sure that meeting was, dude, why do you not hit people? Why are you scared to tackle? Um, Coverage-wise, seven on seven, Kalen Bullock looks like a first-round athlete, looks like a first-round talent. But I'm pretty sure that meeting was like, dude, if we drafted you, are you willing to tackle? Are you willing to hit anybody? Because he is scared of contact. He will literally run a poor angle just so he doesn't have to hit. But the athleticism's there. Ball skills there. A lot of business decisions. But, man, his coverage good. Uh, number four, Tyler Newbin, Minnesota. And number five, Jaden Hicks, Washington State. Um, those are my top five. Um, I'll go back through. But this is not a good safety class. Because if you're a good safety, you don't play safety. 
that's just the way the NFL works. Um, safety doesn't get paid. You play safety, you're not getting paid. That's a fallback position in today's NFL, sadly. I'm not saying I agree with that, but that's just the way it is. Josh says he likes kitchens. I agree with him uh, big time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Uh, space is liquid. There we go. <laughs> hey, Josh, how you doing, man? Um Right here, permanent. Hey, chap, I read stuff about Sorensen and Staley incorporating 3-4. Nah, nah, they don't do that. Uh, no, that's not happening at all. Um, I, I, whoever read that or wherever you read that has not come across from. Now there's some evolutions and coverages and blitzes and things like that. That's what Staley's going to do, and that's what Staley can bring. They're not doing that. Why would you do that with Nick Bosa? It makes zero sense. Um no, nah, that's <laughs> the quote was when Kyle asked was asked about Brandon Staley and what his role is going to be. He will be a big part of game plans and implementing the offseason. Um, he's been a big impact on free agency so far and quote, been very involved with draft stuff in quote three, four ain't happening. So that ain't you can spice some things up, which is good because the 49ers have had the most vanilla defense in the NFL for eight consecutive years. The one time we had somebody that wants to spice it up and blitz, Kyle Shanahan threw a fit. Um, but we'll see. We, we, we need a little bit more spice there. Um, yeah, he, he needs a little bit more. Recon, yeah. Uh, Deshaun fills the Ray Ray return position. He, was a, he fits everything. Cooper Deshaun could play six positions on offense and six positions on defense and return and be fine. Like, I'm sorry. That dude is unbelievable. If he didn't have a broken fibula and we got to see him run a four, three and see like his change of direction and see all those things, he'd be the number one corner in the class. I have him the number three corner in the class, but they're pretty damn close. And the possibility, I know mock drafts are crazy. I cannot see a reality in which Cooper Dijon falls to 31. But if he does, I've got him number 16 overall. Oh, golly. So let, let's talk about that. I finished all my first round graded players. Um, finished most of my second round, but I haven't played some vertically. So again, it, or here's, here's what I do first, okay? All my wide receivers, you know, I boom, boom, boom. I just stack them and I put them in tiers. And then I go through and I watch my two game tapes and that let me finish my evaluation of them and I'll have a first round, second round, you know, back in third round, whatever. And I stack them all vertically. Then I do that for all of the positions, quarterbacks, running backs, all the way around. Once I finish that, my Excel spreadsheet, which I'll share with everybody whenever we get finished, uh, probably get done in about two weeks time from now. Um, and all our Patreon subscribers, all of the 49ers rush.com members, any level, you get our full draft write-up, which is going to be about 100-plus pages, and then you get our, our big board as well. We build a draft-style war room, and this is the same way NFL teams do it. I have scouting friends. I've worked with them, and I've talked to them, and I've asked them, and all this stuff. And so once you, for example, have all your wide receivers, and you got all your first-round wide receivers, all your first-round quarterbacks, all your first-round running backs, then you stack them horizontally. And so that's that war room look. Think Bill Parcells and, you know, whenever you get to see the pictures inside and all that stuff, then you build your rankings all the way out, which a lot of teams don't do. For us, we do. Uh, if you talk to John Lynch, he's not going to say he was our number four graded player. Teams don't do that, especially in the second, third rounds. We do that because it's easier for us to show like blah, 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 Mel Kuyper style, whatever. So I list them one through whatever. NFL teams don't do that aspect. I have 24 first-round grades, which is a little much. Uh, I'm on the high end. Usually teams get between 13 to 18. I'm at 24. I do not pull players from my board. That's one of the big differences. So, for example, if I was a general manager, Amarius Mims would not be a draftable player for me. Would not be. I would literally not have his name on a board. I don't do that. He's a second-round player for me, so he's on my board. 
I can't pull players and chunk them off. I, like for another thing, let's say I don't think somebody's a scheme fit, right? Oh, this is not a scheme fit for the 49ers that like we're throwing them off. Do you think that the 49ers board has Caleb Williams on it? No, it doesn't. Why would they do that? They literally said when they needed a quarterback, they didn't do quarterbacks that year because they weren't going to spend a first round on a Patrick Mahomes or whatever. So they didn't even grade them. So that's a difference between my board. Everybody's on it. Um, So there. So here's my top 24. And it's not finalized. I'll still move some players up and down, and I'll go back and, you know, players that I think the 49ers might actually take in the first round. I'll watch more tape between those guys and, you know, whatever. Learn more. Always open to change. Never be the person that is just, this is it. And I'm not going to change my belief because new information came about. No, I'm not that guy. I'm wrong all the damn time, right? Ask my wife. So here's my top 24. Number one, Caleb Williams, not even close. Number two, Marvin Harrison Jr. And I would have, like, you know, I'm going numerically, one through 24. Those two players are in a class of their by themselves. Like, good gosh. Marvin Harrison Jr. should be the first overall player taken in like six out of 10 drafts, and he's a wide receiver. But Caleb Williams is that damn good. I'm a Longhorn fan. I can't stand him. He's caused me great pain, but he's that good. Drake Mays, number three for me. Roma Dunze is my wide receiver, too, number four on my board. But uh, it literally pins and needles. Like, these guys are so close. Malik uh, Neighbors is my number five. Joe Alt, number six. And, and again, another tier. The top five. Huge gap between five and six. Malik neighbors to Joe Alt, and not close to me. Not even close. But in this draft, you got the top five, and you got everything else. Uh, Joe Alt, number six. Teron, Terry on Arnold. I love that dude. Cornerback out of Alabama, and I hate Alabama players. I hate Alabama. I hate the, I hate the state uh, <laughs> and the school. I loved his tape. It was a lot of fun. Jared Verse, I'm pretty high on. I got him number eight, my number one edge. Uh, Leitu, Latu, UCLA, that's nine. But again, I don't do medicals. I can't. I don't have access. So some teams are not going to be comfortable with a guy that retired and then came back. You know, we went through this process with Jordan Phillips. I loved Jordan Phillips. And a lot of teams said not on their board, not after his whole health thing. Oh, they were wrong. That dude has lived. He should have been a top four pick. I feel very similar about Leitu Latu. I really, really do. So he's number nine for me. Uh, Ole Muayo Fashino, I'm sorry I pronounced his name, tackle Penn State. He's my number 10. Quinion Mitchell, corner out of Toledo, 11. Brock Bowers, 12. I don't value first-round tight ends near as much. I know a lot of people have Brock Bowers top five. He's not going to be drafted in the top 10. I don't know what to tell people. It's not going to happen. He's going to fall. Damn good player. But... You don't get any financial savings by taking the tight end in the first round. So that's not smart. Two, he has no metrics. None. If you're a team that drafts top-tier athletes and physical specimens, Brock Bowers ain't it. Not it. He's great. Way better. His tape's unbelievable. He's a first-round player for me. I have him 12. I understand I'm lower than most. I love him, but... The currency of the NFL draft does not, in my opinion, believe in him being a, ten, a top 10 pick. 12, I want to move him down. I want to move him down. Because I'm telling you right now, if I had the choice, if I needed a tight end or a defensive tackle, I'm taking Byron Murphy, who's my number 12 player, or number 13 player, and Johnny Newton, who's my number 13. Those are, I love them both. I'd take both of those guys over Brock Bowers. So maybe I need to move that. And again, I'm going to constantly change these things. Um, 15, Jaden Daniels. I know he's going to go top five. For me, I've got him at 15. There's some question marks. I think he's incredible. I, I don't like the body style. I hate the big hits. Can he do the routine plays on pace? I know he's amazing, and I, I think he's awesome. But for me, that's where I have him. Cooper DeJean, number six, uh, 16. Dallas Turner. I'm a little lower on him than most, but number 17 overall. Fuaga, Talese out of Oregon State, 18. J.C. Latham, Alabama, 19. Jackson Power Johnson, 
center, Oregon 20. Fautanu, um, tackle number 21. Adonai Mitchell, he's my wide receiver four at 22. Byron Thomas, 23. And Kool-Aid McKinstry, number 24. Those are my first round grades. That's one through 24. It's not going to be finalized, just like NFL teams will move and whatever else. But, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. So uh, there's some guys that, you know, I'm, I don't have in that a lot of others will that I'm way lower on. And I'm okay. Nate Wiggins hated his tape. Dude's a 4-2, speed 40, doesn't like to tackle. He doesn't like, he's not physical enough to play flag football. That's a concern. But if you're a team that wants one of the fastest corners in the NFL day one, great coverage skills, just refuses to tackle, he's not a first-round player for me. Marius Mims, God no. Tyler Guyton, I'm out. Um, they're good players. And I have all those guys in the second round. Not a Marius Mims. I think I have him, I think a third or fourth round. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of where we're at. Um, Recon says, out of curiosity, where do you see Jackson Powers going? Ugh. The center out of Oregon, I really think, like, if I'm looking at draft, just what teams are available? Good lord, sixteen's where it starts, right? Seattle's picking sixteen. Who's their coach? Mike uh, McDonald, right? Yeah, look what they did with their center. They traded. Who did they trade for their center to get their first round pick to take a center? Was that the Marquise Brown trade, Hollywood Brown, and then they picked a center there. I think they did. So, yeah, 16 is a possibility. 18 is a possibility. The Rams are a possibility. Not the Rams now, but the paying the guard. Uh, Rams are no longer a possibility. Pittsburgh's possibility. Miami's possibility. Like, every single team in the NFL, offensive line is an issue. So, unless you have a top five center, Jackson Powers Johnson is a very real possibility because he fits zone. He fits power. You want to do pin and pull? You want to do outside zone? Guess what? Check, check, check. No weaknesses. Now, maybe you could talk about how, well, not a lot of starting experience, but damn, his starting experience is good. And you watch him play against good players. He shows up, period. So I think... It will be difficult for Jackson Powers Johnson to make it past 25. 16 to 25 is where he is. Maybe he falls, but <coughs> yeah, that's that's he's so clean. Josh says uh Brock is going in the 20s. Yeah, I could see it, man. I really could. Yeah, I I just Look at the tr the NFL is a trend league. What has happened with early tight ends? Nobody is seeing the fruit of those picks at all. Period. Travis Kelsey, late pick. <laughs> Come on. George Kittle, late pick. Now, all right, let's talk about Laporta. That changes things. Kincaid, all right. Maybe that's changing a little bit. But it's like I financially, I just don't understand it. So if I was a numbers guy, you draft a tight end in the first round, you're already paying for all pro level tight end pay, no matter what. You're not saving any money. You draft a wide receiver, you draft a corner, you draft an edge, you draft a tackle, you draft a quarterback. You're saving so much damn money on that rookie deal. You draft a tight end, a running back, a safety, an off-ball linebacker, you're paying them top of the market money year one. I, it, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> right here, Brock Bowers drops to 31. Yeah, I think you take him. <coughs> I don't want to. The value would be there. Gosh, that'd be fun. That would be fun. But, nah. I got to know who else is there, right? Um, that's rough. If he's there, ah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. I, I'm mad at myself for my mind is just like, yeah, but, mm, but, ah, ah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, I'm fighting with myself 
And I think that's what teams are going to have to do because I think for a lot of teams, and it has nothing to do with Brock Bowers besides how small he is and his metrics, not good. Like those, that thing. The film says yes. Salary cap says no. The tape measure says no. And I think teams are going to have to fight. They're going to have to say, look, we really want this tackle. We really want this corner. We really want this wide receiver. And if they're gone, Brock Bowers, we got the grade. The grade's high enough. And so I think it's going to take one of those teams where it's like, man, our three options we wanted, none of them are there. Brock's staring us in the face. He's a damn good player. Fans will love it. Helps our quarterback. Helps our run game. I think that's what it, that it's it's rough, man. The paradox that is Brock Bowers. Um, thankfully, I don't think the 49ers are even close to being in that conversation. So uh, that that's kind of where that goes. Real quick, a couple other questions that came through. Um, <clears throat> the 49ers appreciate this question. Do you see the 49ers trading Ayuk for a first round pick this year? I do not. Using that pick to get Patrick Sertan, I do not. That's a double negative for me. Patrick Sertan would take multiple first rounds. Um, or and then you got to pay him. I don't like trading premium and paying premium. That's why I don't think the 49ers will get a first round pick for Ayuk. And if they do, it's not going to be high enough. If it's not a top 20 pick, I'm not interested. And again, if a team offered me a top 20 pick, I'm having a conversation, but it doesn't mean I'm going to do it. It would take a first and a third round pick. That top 20 pick, I'm using on an offensive tackle in this class, whichever one falls. Pick 31, I'm going to I'm going to draft a I'm going to draft Adonai Mitchell. That's who I'm taking, AD Mitchell. That is the most clear not the top 3, obviously Roma Dunze and Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. You're not touching those guys. You're not sniffing those guys, right? You hear me say my top five, then there's a big gap between the number six guy, uh, Joe Alt. You're not touching those guys. Nobody's giving up those picks. Like, if you ask 32 teams in the NFL, Kyle Shanahan included, would you rather have Brandon Ayuk or Roma Dunze? It's Roma Dunze because of the salary cap. That's the difference. You have four cheap years. Four cheap years. And their ceilings are just bananas. So no, I don't see us trading Ayuk. If somebody offers it, you got to have the conversation. You have to. You have to with this team. I want to keep Ayuk. I do like. I don't want to trade him. I don't want to trade him. I would rather keep Ayuk. Let him play this year on the fourteen point one million dollar deal. Let's just say contract negotiations go horrible. We can't sign him. I don't care. Keep him for this year. Franchise him next year, then let him walk and get your third round comp pick. I'm I would prefer that. Give me two years of Ayuk while my Super Bowl window's open. Then we let him walk and we get a third round comp pick. I would take that over trading him for I don't know. Look at a team. Whatever, it doesn't matter. A top 20, 20th pick overall. I would take that. I would prefer that. I, I I'm not giving up on him. I'm not giving up on him. Um, ice cold Nars, John, I loved your previous streams with Chuck B, um, is all weather is that event you're throwing. I know I'm tuning in, man. Chuck's my best friend and he's an Eagles fan. He's not watching this show. It definitely not watching this show the past two years, but, uh, I, this, the 40 hours rush doesn't happen without Charles Barr. Like he is the reason why I started recording whenever I got out of coaching. Um, and we're at episode 1094 which is awesome. So yeah, Chuck's going to be a part of something, whatever we do. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And you know, the logistics, we'll figure it all out, but uh, we'll, we'll see what that looks like. Um, so anyway, uh, that's going to end our show today. Hopefully you guys enjoy the Easter weekend. You guys are incredible. We won't have a show tomorrow. Monday we'll be back full swing for sure. Um, but you guys are the best and I am very thankful continuously to be able to do this. And the only reason why I am is because you guys keep clicking like on these videos and you keep downloading. And I'm just so thankful and so grateful. And, uh, for letting me be a small part of your lives and the 49ers fandom that you bring. Um, so again, just thank you guys. And as always stay strong, faithful.